So what we want to start with is look at a few examples of nonlinear systems. All right, very simple. Uh, all of you, uh, I'm sure, have already seen quite a few models. I, I don't think I have to particularly, uh, you know, uh, tell you that this is nonlinear and that is nonlinear. You know, if you start to model any single thing, including this fan right here, up, uh, it's a nonlinear system. Okay, so uh, almost everything that you see around you. Is a nonlinear system. Yeah. Uh, for the sake of control, of course, engineers have been for decades uh, using been using linear approximations, and it's pretty fair. I mean, uh, I mean, I have I have seen PID controllers work very well in practice, so I can't say that uh, there is no merit there. Yeah. Uh, but of course, when you want advanced precision, yeah, then you have to work with nonlinear systems. Okay, and this is one of the things which sort of attracted me to uh, spacecraft, space systems also because there, if you if you are if you have a really you know uh, very very small error in your attitude or your orientation, then uh, uh, you are guaranteed to not send any real signal to the Earth. For example, if you have an Earth pointing device, then re really small errors in your orientation will also uh, you know make your antenna worthless. Yeah, for all intents and purposes. Okay, so uh, so that's one of the nice things, I guess. So for to study nonlinear systems, all right. So we want to look at examples. So here the example is a little bit more esoteric, just to you know, just to uh, you know, sort of uh, drive the point, I guess. Yeah, all right. So uh, the typical model that we work with, a typical nonlinear system model that we are talking about in this course always looks like this. This is also the mathematical sort of representation. I hope all of you are comfortable with these kinds of notation. Okay. Yeah. If not, I really encourage you to look up some of these notations also. Yeah. Or you can ask me of while we are discussing. Yeah. But I may not be able to explain every single notation. Okay. So, uh, we typically say that our system is of the form x dot is f of x t. Okay, so this is a nonlinear system. This is not a nonlinear control system. Okay, because there is no control here in the expression. Yeah. So here, this is just a nonlinear system. The function f is typically a map which is uh, sufficiently regular. What do you think I would imply by sufficient regularity? Any guesses? Yes, absolutely. Uh, I'm sorry. Did you say you said that it's the dimension? Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. So when you say sufficiently regular, you are expecting it to be sufficiently differentiable in this context. Yeah. Um, you may be able to do with much less. Yeah. Um, again, the differentiability requirement, like she rightly said, is also depends on the dimension that you are sort of talking about, but. Uh, a lot of times we just make our lives really simple. We just say that the function is smooth, so it's infinitely differentiable. Yeah. Uh, uh, but again, uh, in reality, that may not be the case. So it's better to work with the least possible assumption. Yeah. We'll also look at those. But typically, when we say sufficient regularity, this is what we mean. Yeah. We are talking about some kind of a continuity, differentiability, these kind of properties. All right. Um, X is what is called, what is it called? States of the system. Thank you. Yeah, X represent the states of the system. Any system can, uh, is representable in the form of states. Yeah, again, the fan, a ubiquitous fan because it's right there. I can say that the angular position, angular velocity, these are the states. Maybe the states that I am interested in, but of course there is an electrical motor, so there may be you know the voltage, yeah, which is a state possibly, or I can think of the current as the state and voltage as the input, yeah. So the current is the state and the voltage can be thought of as the control input, yeah. So depending on how high fidelity a model you want, as that is the number of states you can have, 
okay yeah even in civil engineering if you think structural engineering model structural systems a little bit flexible structures like you know these suspension bridges and things like that yeah you can have the flexible modes as your states first mode second mode third mode things like that of course typically it's an infinite dimensional model but then you you sort of discretize it yeah so you can still have you know uh, you can still put it in a state space form yeah okay so there is no particular answer to how many states we should consider again depends on the complexity you are willing to handle in terms of computation and depends on how easy or hard your control design task is yeah so it, it, there is no guideline at all yeah depends absolutely on uh, us for a system like the fan the position and velocity are more than enough more than enough you will be you know more than comfortably control the system do computation if you wanted to make it a smart fan you have smart fans these days right whatever yeah so you can easily do it yeah with position and velocity more than enough but but if you're talking a biological system you're talking electrical system you can't yeah so so these guidelines are usually uh, the guidelines on how many states and so on usually come from system uh, you know properties like observability controllability we don't talk about it here uh, again i'm not sure we may get time or not to talk about nonlinear system controllability and observability because that is a huge uh, topic in itself and i'm not sure if i'll be able to do justice to it yeah because if i do that i'll probably be able, will not be able to do any design okay so anyway so x are the states t is of course the time uh, it doesn't necessarily have to be start at initial time 0 so therefore we give some initial time the op the close bracket t0 and an open bracket at infinity because there is you know no infinite time as such yeah and of course f is a map which takes states and time and gives you something in rn yeah and x dot is of course telling you how it's evolving right so if i if i integrate this i can integrate more often than not i integrate it numerically you cannot expect to be solving any of these yeah uh, you know analytically so um, you can integrate this to see the evolution of the system okay so interesting examples all right i i spoke to you folks about this infectious diseases model and so on so this is one such model i mean not a, yeah so this is an hiv spread model so here you have two set of states uh, so x is the population of uninfected cells per unit volume of blood and y is the population of the infected cells per unit volume of blood okay and the revolution is uh, and in here i is basically the immuno response so in fact this is a control system okay if you think of i as a control yeah of course there is a natural immuno response but if you if there is a potential for boosting this immuno response then i is a control yeah so control is anything that um, a user can specify or command or you know in the simplest aero mechanical systems easy to understand you know motors and drives and things like that you know uh, propellers actuators yeah easy to understand but of course uh, more complicated in biological systems social systems what is the control right so here it is the immuno response so if you can somehow push a drug which will accentuate the immuno response then you have a control okay and then of course you can see this evolution because i mean it's it's clearly non linear by the way, I hope all of you understand what is linear and non-linear. How do I say that a system is linear or non-linear? Right. So, homogeneity, superposition principle. Essentially, it has to satisfy the superposition. And what has to satisfy the superposition principle? This right hand side. That's it. So, this right hand side function f, if it is actually satisfying the superposition principle, then it's a linear system. If not, it's a non-linear system. Okay. And uh, easy to identify, of course. So, because I have a product of x, y, and so on, this is a nonlinear system. Yeah. So, both these terms, in fact, this is the only term. Yeah. Interestingly, you can see that this appears in the negative and this appears in the positive. So, it's it's sort of saying that uh, the product of the infected and uninfected cells. So, these are all of these um, typically these infectious disease models. These are all sort of reaction models. Yeah, chemical reaction models are what they are. They look like chemical reaction models also. So here you can see that the product of the infected and uninfected cells um, sort of affects 
it adversely affects the uninfected cells and if the product is positive the infected cells increase okay so this is sort of uh, you know sort of affects the how things go okay and of course these are i mean lot of parameters i don't uh, honestly i don't even know what these parameters are <laughs> yeah but these parameters are what influence the rate at which things happen okay so this is a non linear model all right again like i said you will not be hard pressed to find non linear models i'm just giving you some esoteric models just to give you a feel of where non linear dynamical systems could be applicable okay all right this is the actual sir model this has been used extensively extensively in covid uh, modeling yeah i mean if you just type covid model and you pick up uh, you know just look at the papers you will find them using the sir model okay why because this is one of the most acceptable model for infectious disease spread not just covid okay so the only thing that changes with a particular disease are these parameters okay the only thing that sort of changes is these parameters so lot of research went into uh, you know what would be the peak number so that sort of an asymptotic analysis so uh, the only problem that happened i felt was that these sir type models do not account for new variants coming in okay so when new variants come in it's like a uh, it's like an impulse it's almost like an impulse because sure now the numbers are very small but it's possible that you know say the delta numbers were very small to begin with right but then there was some kind of a uh, you know critical mass and then there is a huge jump in the numbers right and those are not accounted for with these models by these models yeah so as you can see any model has its weakness yeah so new variants there is no way of predicting new variants with sir models what sir model can do is once a variant has you know sort of entered a population then it can tell you how fast it's going to progress and what equilibrium it can potentially reach okay depending on you know how how you isolate and things like that so you have th three states here one is the susceptible second is the infected and r is the removed or recovered okay makes sense susceptible is all the population that is you know potentially get it yeah so these are all the folks who well not using you know appropriate protection right uh, infected is folks who are already infected right and removed or recovered because typically with most infectious diseases like covid uh, if you get got a particular variant uh, you can hope that for the next 2 3 months at least you are safe and uh, until you get the new <laughs> until the new variant comes in unfortunately yeah i mean uh, so that was the really sad part but anyway so uh, not to say that you cannot get it but the point is the current variant you will be immune to yeah it's almost like getting a vaccine shot yeah for a while yeah all right so then and then you have this sort of a model yeah i would really encourage you to look it up i mean you can see so many papers using this sir model and exploiting it to get you know these asymptotic features of you know how covid is going to progress how what is the equilibrium it's going to reach and so on and so forth okay then uh, this is a nice uh, sort of a mechanical system model yeah uh, and a rather complicated mechanical system model uh, folks who work with uh, the, um, you know if if some of you have worked with the corporates and like, like tractor companies like john deere and you know things like that you know that these are rather important problems for them yeah so you have uh, you typically have a tractor but then you have some kind of a trailer also attached to it yeah so which may carry you know some of your uh, produce and things like that or it may be just another piece of equipment that you are carrying and usually there is a you know this sort of a single link between them yeah and if you want to control this kind of a system you have to actually have a this becomes a rather complicated model in fact yeah uh, with a lot of variables so you can see that you have many variables like the lateral offset you have the orientation offset which is this guy yeah so the lateral offset is basically the uh, if this is the path you want to follow then this is sort of a lateral offset how far you are from that path so this is sort of the seen as the center of you know mass in some sense yeah um then you have the orientation offset what is the orientation offset you look at the tangent it is the direction you are expected to move at this point in the curve and the direction you are actually moving 
and then you look at the orientation offset yeah so these are the things you sort of you can imagine right as a control engineer these are things i want to drive to zero in some sense yeah then you have yeah i mean then you have this phi os and steady state value for phi and things like that okay um, unfortunately the this is a different notation and this is a different notation well yeah, yeah i mean that's just because i didn't write it properly but this th these are the same yeah okay so this is the same as this guy so this and this are the same this is the where fee where fee yeah all right so the idea is that we want to drive these variables to zero okay so typically in controls this is a very uh, standard requirement that i always want to drive uh, some variables to zero okay so this is usually my aim yeah uh, so if if uh, for example if i'm looking at a tracking problem say a robot tracking problem like if i want to do a mobile robot tracking problem yeah and i want to drive this mobile robot on this path yeah but controls guys really like to drive things to zero so what will i do i will take my uh, state as the error between my current uh, you know uh, current state and the desired state yeah and then create an error and then i'll drive the error to zero yeah so we really don't like to drive things to some values we like to drive things to zero okay because uh, when you see um, you know um, all our theorems that come come up in the future you will see that you know this is what we look at we look at all zero equilibrium and things like that okay so that's the idea so this is the model very scary looking honestly speaking yeah so this is the lateral offset derivative yeah this is the uh angle offset derivative and this is the phi where phi offset derivative okay uh, these are absolute values uh, where v1 v2 these are all velocities of the you know these are the velocities of the uh trailer the tractor yeah so so this is the very very complicated looking model the control is basically the tan delta so this is i believe so this is the control here yeah this is what we get to play with and i believe this is the steering if i'm not wrong i think this this is the steering yeah so essentially the control in this case is just the steering okay so this is a, again a slightly simplified model i guess you're saying that you're moving at some uh, uniform velocity and you're just controlling the steering yeah all right hmm. i have no idea if the system is controllable or not so uh, that's a not an easy question to handle looking at this model and the sigma is some variable which is plus minus 1 depending on whether it's clockwise or counter clockwise okay what is sigma i think depending on how you're rotating the uh, you know the wheel you get a sign here for this particular sigma all right so that's that's it it's just because of how the model is being represented but the control is just one and that's this which is the steering yeah all right huh? sigma is not a physical variable at all okay sigma is just depending on how you are rotating the steering clockwise or counter clockwise it just assumes a sign in the model here okay this is just because how the modeling is done all right that's it then you have like this lorenz atmospheric model okay so this is basically saying how the layers in the atmosphere move around okay so uh, you can see these examples are from very very <laughs> wide range of areas okay x is basically the convective flow y is the horizontal temperature distribution and z is the vertical temperature distribution okay so there is a state variable which is representing the flow okay and correspondingly there is variables which tell you how the temperature distribution in the atmosphere would be okay this might be interesting for folks who are looking at uh, how the weather patterns are going to change okay so because you're looking at how the temperature distribution in the atmosphere is changing okay so here uh, rho is the temperature difference between the top and the bottom slice depending on what you how big a you know how thick or you know you are looking at how what is the width of the atmosphere you are actually analyzing depending on that you will get a different model and beta is width to height ratio of the slice okay so so given this you have 
you know, uh, you have this nonlinear. So this this particular piece, as you can see, is pretty much linear, right? This is the convective flow variable. So this is just linear. It de depends just on uh, you know y minus x, which is like the temperature distribution and the convective flow variable itself. Okay. Um, then the y variable here has this nonlinearity, right? Does an x times z. And similarly, the z variable, so that is the horizontal temperature distribution, also has this nonlinearity. All right, okay. 